My name is Joanna McCrory and I'm from Poland. My name is Kamila Kowalczyk, I'm, I'm from North Nordic. My name is Sylvia Kowalczyk and I'm from Poland. I've been here for 15 years. And it's actually funny because the idea was to come here for, the plan was here to come here for three months. Um, and then I got the job in uh, my profession. I've been in Ireland for 15 years. Uh, the plan was to come here for three months, uh, just as a holiday break actually, because I wanted to do something uh, completely different than uh, finish my degree and settle down and all these things. I just felt the need of like, well, I need to explore. So I thought, oh, Ireland, it's gonna be a good place to go. Uh, so I came here, uh, met a boyfriend, got a job in my profession. I thought, right, I'm gonna stay for maybe three months longer, six months longer. And it's, it's, it's been 15 years and I haven't looked back. I've been enjoying myself here and my life here too. I've been in Ireland since I was born. Okay. Um, well, I, I came to Ireland about 15 and a half years ago as well. Um, never wanted to really come to the islands because I didn't like the weather, um, didn't like tea with milk. Um, and I thought, you know, oh, this is the last country I would ever go to. And then there we are, 15 years later, I'm, I'm here and I have a child that is born in here. Um, and I, I also, I don't look back and I, I don't regret the decision that I made um, coming over here. Now when I think one of the first challenges I experienced was the language. When I, le when I was in Poland, uh, I was quite good at English, at least I thought I was good. Uh, I was helping other students to pass their exams in English. Um, and the first thing I came here, I did not understand one word. I was like, do they actually speak English here? <laughs> So it was it was really funny because I remember when we rent uh, with my partner when we rent an apartment uh, There was the, the boiler was broken. So the landlord said uh, I'm gonna send someone to fix it and a couple of days later There's someone knocking to my door. I open there's some guy with tools <laughs> saying things like I don't remember what because I did not understand one word So I said excuse me. I'm sorry pardon and uh, so he said it again and again, I did not understand. So I said, I assume you came here to fix the boiler. He understood me, but I didn't understand him. So <laughs> he was just like, yes, I came here to fix your bo boiler. So yes, boiler is there, here you go. And even, even at work situation, uh, like, you know, when you learn English, you learn English from books. So how old are you, like a proper way. The girl at work asked me, what age are you with a very strong accent? Not a word. I, I could not answer the question. So language was one of them, definitely. And uh, the political situation, I think, and religious religion here in general, and uh, how people are divided. Uh, I did not understand that. Uh, it it was it was something different that I'd known, because back home. Uh, we don't really pay attention to those things, maybe because majority of the people are the uh, same religion. Uh, but politically, we're, we're divided also, but I just felt we're a lot more united than people here. So I, I understood that I had to be very um, careful with even certain comments because I did not realize that certain things can offend people. So, so that was the challenge, definitely. And, um, even things like uh, setting up a bank account because you need to have you need to have um, a confirmation of your a proof of address and to have it you have to live somewhere to get the bill uh, so it was like at, at work they wanted uh, your bank account to pay you you couldn't give them because you didn't have bank account you couldn't have a bank account because you don't have proof of address and it's like what do I do here so <laughs> those were the things I uh, struggled with I mean, like, when I'm at school, there's people in my class have all these certain things they do with their family, and it's like, well, our Irish tradition is whatever, and I don't, I've never actually done any of those, because I'm from a Polish background, I 
would usually do Polish culture things and I went to Poland a few years ago and it was I could understand them perfectly well I could somewhat talk quite well but it was just so different because of like their currency was sort of worth a lot more than ours is and also just like it was crazy to hear all these people speaking another language you know that's not English and just the, it was like everywhere it's not like oh you pass by in here and you see you hear like two people speaking Polish it's like it's everywhere <laughs> I think that's just a big difference in here um, I think the first thing when I came to Ireland the the most difficult was to to settle in for me I think the weather I was the biggest shock um, I came in April and April in Poland is it's usually spring and it's getting warmer um, so I packed my suitcase with mostly summery clothes um, and when I arrived it was cold it was raining um, the first thing I had to do was to go to the shop and buy myself jumpers um, I was then sick I, I catch a cold I got a cold, cold and, and then I had to obviously you know take paracetamol and all that um, and then later on, um, so that was sort of the, f the first thing. Later on, uh, trying to find um, a social life in here and trying to figure out, you know, where do you go, where are you not to go. People were talking, right, uh, you go to this part of the city, you don't talk Polish because, you know, that will be in trouble. You When you go there, you need to do this. And it was just really difficult. And usually people, when you talk, they s straight away, they know your accent. And they, oh, where are you from? And it's like... Do I say or do I not say? You know, am I safe in here or am I not? Um, but I think not, nowadays it's it's easier because people are, I think um, in con in this country are used to having foreign people. In fifteen years ago, it was just mainly Polish people that were starting to come in um, in, in majority, and I, I was lucky enough um, to to come in with my sister and my brother in here um, and my husband boyfriend at the time. Um, and we went to the same job and I've managed to be in the team with the local people that were very nice and very kind and they were helping me with trying to learn the language and um, trying to find, you know, oh, this is where you go to buy, you know, your grocery, this is where you can go and, and buy things and, and this is the mechanic or, you know, when you your house maybe is, you know, um, I don't know, something like boiler broke down, this is what you do, you know. I also find difficulties with, with the language trying to understand. Um, and, and my friend that came over with me after, well, she came over to me, sorry, after a um, couple of years, she knew English perfectly. And the, whenever she came over here, she says she doesn't understand a word either. And it took her a while um, <laughs> to get used to, you know, different accent and stuff. So yes, I, my, my vision of English languages, it was different at the start as well. Um, so yes, but I think, you know, all those challenges, you know, sort of, kept us strong but also there were positive things not, not just a challenge but a positive of way of people living here that um, you go to work you come back from work and you can have a relaxed life you don't have to worry about um, like in Poland um, some people work from the first of the month to the first of the month they struggle with money and they always stressing um, in here you could just relax a bit because you had a job and it was stable job um, and you got enough money to, to buy groceries and you still have plenty left. Um, so I think that was a, a, not a challenge, but I think, you know, a different view of, of life and, and trying to um, get yourself, you know, relaxed a little bit and don't stress out every day. Uh, we would celebrate, we would start celebrating Christmas a day before. So when you would have uh, when people here in Ireland would uh, celebrate Christmas on a Christmas day and you have your traditional dinner with your family, <clears throat> we would start on the 24th, which is Christmas Eve, uh, with a dinner with the family. Um, and it's a, it's a different dinner than a dinner here to dinner here. Uh, we would have 12 dishes served that day and everyone has to try uh, every one of them. Uh, and it's usually a vegetarian as well. You have your meat dinners and meat uh, meals the following days, uh, Christmas Day and a Boxing Day. Uh, but the Christmas Eve is the one that you're not supposed to eat meat because it's night before Chris Christ was born. Um, 
We have 12 meals because uh, dishes because of 12 apple stalls. Um, and um, oh, there's also that thing that we would leave one seat empty just in case someone would not knock the door and say, I'm hungry. So you're supposed to have one free for someone uh, that is hungry and doesn't have family. And I, to be fair, I don't think it never happened in, in my house. I don't remember as a child some stranger knocking to the doors like, hello, can you feed me? Because everyone would just go to a friend's house or a family house to, to, to have a dinner. Um, what is also, we have gifts on the 24th as well. We don't open our presents on the 25th. So, Camila, you, you, you should have two gifts, you know, from Santa <laughs> on the 24th and the 25th. Mm. Uh, I also have a couple of funny stories, but probably I can mention did, about Did later. you all always have 12 courses on Christmas? At least. Eve? At least. I think we'll get sometimes with, more. Yeah. Do you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. With our time. family, we, <clears throat> we tried a couple of times. I remember, because um, I have older sisters, and sometimes they were like, right, Today, you know, like this year, we're planning to do proper traditional Christmas and then like a list of, right, this is what you need to do. Um, and 12 dishes, it's, it's a lot. Even if you have a big family, there's still a lot of food that you have to eat and you have to try. And even you try four of them and you're already full, but you, there's still, you know, another eight to go. Um, another traditions, it's um, you're putting hay under the, the tablecloth. Table mm -hmm. Um, to, to because Christ was in the in the stables, um, there was another one that no one can leave the table until everyone is finished eating. Um, you should keep your feet. Um, it's it's like don't keep them on the floor. You should keep them, you know, sort of higher. Another one, um, I think, whenever we do dumplings, you put um, I think a bit of a, what was it? Was it a, a nut or was it something hard that you put I in the dumpling? Maybe then maybe you're part of. Might be, you know, remember. then one person, whoever gets it, then whenever they eat it, that was their luck, you know. So it was loads of different things that I remember that particular year whenever my sister came up with this idea to do all traditions from everywhere, you know, she just sort of got a list. Um, but I don't, you know, like years after, you know, we were not doing all the dishes. We always had the traditionally um, at beetroot soup, the, the dumplings um, and, and fish, as, as Joanna says, because we don't eat meat on that day. Um, and usually, I think the traditionally Christmas would be, we don't have a Christmas tree since September. Um, we would have Christmas tree put on, um, maybe, maybe <laughs> Christmas Eve or maybe a week before, depending on on if you're putting a fresh up or if you're putting a fake up, and then we would keep it until I think the sixth of January, um, till the Three Kings Day, and then you should then take it off. Um, but we wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't. Um, Locally, people do sometimes. You see, you know, September. In n n <laughs> the, the minute um, Halloween finished, there's Christmas trees up, um, and we all sort of find like, what just happened, you know? And then you go to shop, and there's just Christmas there, and you're like, well, it's it's just like November, like why, you know? Um, but you know, after years, you know, we understand now. <laughs> and I think this year we also got the Christmas tree sooner than I think this is the year that everyone got the Christmas tree sooner, and there was no questions asked. Yeah, yeah, but I remember with this Christmas tree um, that my dad always brought the fresh, uh, fresh, uh, beautiful, big Christmas tree on the Christmas Eve in the morning, and the whole house is just smells like a Christmas tree. It's amazing. So this living room and the hallway uh, smells like Christmas tree, but at the same time, uh, there is this smell from the kitchen coming because mom is cooking obviously for three days because it's not just cooking for Christmas. Eve, it's also for Christmas Day and the Boxing Day, so you rest those days, you don't do anything uh, cook, cook, cooking wise on, on the Christmas Day and the Boxing Day because you go and visit the family that obviously have many leftovers from the night before, plus a lot more because meat dishes um, is on top of whatever there was the night before. So you go and visit your family and have meals there, uh, your family and friends visit you and, and you always yes. have loads of food for them. So. You don't do anything, you don't do any work, you just relax for, for another two days after Christmas Eve. But yes, I remember those smells, really nice smells of Christmas tree and food. Um. Have a mixture of both, definitely. Um, 
24th we celebrate. If if I can't go uh, home, I would go home and celebrate it with my family in Poland. Uh, there are years that they were able to come over, so we would celebrate 24th in my house. But on the 25th, uh, we would celebrate it with our Irish family, which is you know friends that you pick because your your best friends are your family that you actually pick. So. Uh, yes, we would definitely have a mixture of both. Um, what, do you, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the Irish Christmas or the Polish Christmas or have them both? I kind of prefer the Irish one because I'm not a big fan of beetroot soup. And it's just having <laughs> to eat that every Christmas before Christmas is supposed to be happy and you have to eat something that's like my least favourite food. So it's kind of like, you know, a bit of bittersweet sort of. But it's nice to have still a bit of Polish culture and then have Irish culture as well. It's nice to have a bit of, bit of both. Um, as Camila says, we would celebrate um, also 24, trying to keep the Polish tradition in. Um, but it is difficult when your child doesn't like beetroots and she doesn't like dumplings and she doesn't like cabbage or she doesn't like mushrooms. Um, it's really hard to find, you know, I wouldn't put 12 dishes on the table because I would have to eat them myself with my husband. Um, which would be very difficult. So we we trying to um, probably fish. She can eat, so we will give her fish. Maybe um, boil some potatoes on the on the top of that. Um, and then also we, f the last I think, couple of years I would say we started um, celebrating twenty fifth um, of December, and we started um, doing the traditional turkey, um, and we do this um, meal on on the twenty fifth, and trying to then. If possible, you know, invite friends, invite family, um, depending, you know, if someone is maybe away home to Poland or maybe there's people, you know, that they, they can't go home. So we say, you know, just come over. Um, this year, I'm not sure what's going to happen with, uh, with COVID and restrictions. Um, every family really has to stay, you know, apart. There may be a possibility that a couple of us can meet together, but well, why do you pick really? Do you go and say to two sisters, yes, we can come over, but do I say to brother, no, you can't because the restrictions? I'm not quite sure, you know, how we're going to cope this year with that, but hopefully we'll manage to meet everyone um, during a special time. So, in terms of pandemic, um, it was it was very challenging from the start, I have to say. But having said that, I'm one of the lucky ones that kept working all this time. I really feel for people who were locked in the house, couldn't go anywhere, couldn't didn't have any routine. Uh, I did work from home at the beginning uh, for maybe three four weeks, uh, then uh, a little bit both. Uh, I had I think the best of two worlds. I was uh, working from home for a couple of days and uh, another two or three days in the office and kept it like that for many, many months until now when I work a little bit more in the office and I have this routine which helps you to cope with things. Um, what I ch One of the other challenges I had was a lack of sport. Uh, indoor sport that I got used to, that I've played for over 20 years of my life, even Actually, maybe a little bit more, but I don't want to go into details <laughs> uh, because I'm coming <laughs> to my big birthday soon. So, uh, and I think we all in our team, because volleyball is team sport. It's not just about physical activity, but a social aspect around this as well. Uh, we as a team um, try to find a way of uh, getting some kind of sport activity together as a team. Um, through through internet through zoom classes uh, but me personally I started um, doing that app uh, couch 5 to K yeah couch to 5k sorry and I did it with my friend that lives in Nottingham uh, we did online listen go out go and uh, do your do your first run okay okay so even even when there were days that you didn't want to go have, knowing that your friend is doing it on the other side, on the other island, it's like, right, okay, I have to go. So it, it actually kept us sane, you know, doing things together, even online, uh, through over the phone. Um, so I did struggle not to see my family in Poland. 
ev since I came over here, uh, which was 15 years ago, at the beginning I was at home uh, six, seven times a year. I was traveling back and forth all the time. I really did. I was, I was, uh, I missed them a lot. Missed my life back home as well. Uh, so from that to not traveling at all, it, it was a big challenge. But it was a big challenge not to see them live and, and interact with uh, close friends and family. So. I think my biggest challenge is probably homeschooling. Just having, because having the, being in secondary school, it's not like back in primary school, you had like a few set subjects and that's it. In secondary school you have loads of subjects and loads of little classrooms and it's like, it's like, you, it's your responsibility to make sure you know what you're doing. You've done the work and you've uploaded it and you've got everything up to date and you're ready for everything. And that's a lot of pressure because I was in year eight at the time. So I was new to all of this. And it was like, I have, I was there for my January exams, which was January. So I got the first half of the year and then it was like a big switch to getting ready for summer exams, which were canceled eventually. And just sort of dealing with that just was a little bit stressful and a little bit hard, but no other major challenges. Well, I think my major challenge, um, we started noticing, you know, change in the world um, because our company um, buys products from China. So whenever China started um, lockdowns and stuff, we noticed our obviously products stopped coming in and we noticed the, the change in work. Um, and then started hearing about schools um, closing and it was a big stress because what do you do, you know, what do you do with the child? Do you still go to work? Do you keep the child at home? I was lucky enough that my mom was still over with us um, and she would be able to manage, uh, you know, Camilla during the time. But I knew obviously when she's going to be home, uh, homeschooling, she, she needs someone to supervise her, she needs, you know, help. Um, and if, if I'm at work, you know, who's going to help her at home? Um, and then eventually in March, you know, everything closed down and we were all at home and from my point of view Camilla did well with her school, homeschooling because um, she had a set of um, the school did well because they gave her a um, set of homework to do and she sat down and she managed to get into routine right I'm starting off this is what I need to do um, from the morning to afternoon and then she was able to relax after um, I started a bit you know after the first couple of weeks for me were very difficult I, I didn't know what's happening in the world I was watching news every day and at some point, I think after two weeks, I said, right, that's enough. I, I just I just cannot watch this anymore because I wasn't even coming out from the house. Husband has to, had to go to do the shoppings. He was going for walks and I didn't even want to go out. Um, so eventually I stopped watching the news and I, I came out from the house and, and started walking and seeing, you know, like uh, getting fresh air because I was literally going just to the back garden. That was it. Um, me and, and Joanna and, and our friend from Nottingham, we decided to, to do um, weekly meetings um, <laughs> every Wednesday night, meet up, you know, to talk and, and see, you know, how we how we dealing with stuff and even, you know, have a laugh because that's what I miss the most, you know, um, interacting with people and, and I love to talk to them and I love to, you know, laugh and um, with sports being cancelled as well, you know, couldn't couldn't even go and, and enjoy and, and see people and, and interact with them, which I think what, what John was trying to say, you know, if you play a team sport for so many years, it's it's really hard suddenly just to stop doing this. Um, so luckily enough, you know, lockdown happened during warmer times, um, and we were able to, you know, enjoy the good weather um, in May and June, and then we were able to, I think me and Camilla put the tent outside in the in the back garden for for a week, so we even slept in in it, um, so we were enjoying that. A um, couple of meetings, and yes, maybe we didn't get to travel um, all around, and we didn't get to do lots of things that we would do. Our holiday was cancelled this way, we were not able to go abroad. Um, no one was able to go even back home to Poland, and that was bad. But at the same time, we, we then decided, right, we're going to just maybe renovate the house a little bit, so let's do something different, you know, so we don't don't go, you know, like to waste all our energy and, and, and all that that we're trying to put in all year. Um, at for sure, going back to work was was a big plus and and kept me sane from having the routine to get up in the morning and go and come back home. Not having that, it's it's I I am really sorry for people that don't have this privilege to go to work and even working from home. Um, not everyone has the facility to you know have one room set up for office, another room set up for breakfast, and you know whatnot. 
um, not everyone has this and, and also people have lots of children in home that they have to manage at the same time that they're working and not always this is um, so easy as you know people saying oh homeschooling you can do it not everyone was born a teacher <laughs> um, which I was grateful that Camila was so good and she managed to do um, most of her school work all by herself she only managed mm -hmm. She only asked, you know, a couple of questions when, when she needed help and we were going through the, um, the the things, but everything else was, yeah, done <laughs> properly. The kitchen was my spot. Yeah, the kitchen was her <laughs> um, school. <laughs> <laughs>
it, it was it was so good to sit down, you know, as an adult and actually talk about you know what have we been doing when we were you know kids and and, and having a laugh and and spend the time together and as for Santa, I remember my oldest sister and her husband dressed up as Mrs. Claus and, and Santa Claus and both of them came in and they said, right, we have so many presents, would you help us? And I was like, right, okay. Um, I grab a hat and I just put it on and I was coming and I said, who are you? I'm like, well, I'm Santa's helper. <laughs> Do you know what I have a present here for? Um, we didn't have, you know, we didn't ask kids to, to sing or nothing because they were still, you know, like two years old, three years old, so we didn't ask them to, to do much, but they were just like, who is this person with the beard? Like, you know, and who, who is he? Is it my uncle? No. You know, it was it was really funny to see the kids, you know, reacting to Santa because they haven't, because they were so small, we haven't seen them, you know, reacting to that before. Um, so yeah, it was it was a special Christmas that all family was together, which it was good and, and memorable. I remember many Christmases when, yes, it was White Christmas, definitely, but not every year. I have to say we were like waiting for the snow, uh, but usually December, January, February, it's, it's white. Uh, yeah, uh, but not as white as uh, I remember my parents told me they experienced Christmas because back then uh, they were like Christmas for like, uh, sorry, snow for one meter, one and a half meters. They were building some uh, Igloo and stuff? Yes. Yes, yes. yes, and like labyrinths and stuff like that I, I in, in their it's, gardens. It's probably because you are from north, which is closer to the sea. So yeah. you don't have, like I am from the site and I'm closer to the mountains. So our um, winters, they start in like maybe late October, November. You're already getting snow, it's getting colder. So I remember every, I think, Christmas, there was loads of snow. There was, as you're saying, up to there. And you have mm -hmm. to go, before you go to school, you have to shovel your way. Or <laughs> or my neighbor would do it because, you know, he would get up in the morning and actually shovel, you know, the wee footpath so we can go. Um, and, mm -hmm. and I loved, you know, like Christmas time and, and time of school when we can go and, and enjoy, you know, going on sleigh and going on um, ice skating and, and just enjoy, you know, like building, you know, um, mm -hmm. snowmen and building. I think my brother tried once igloo. Which was mm -hmm. quite, you know, interesting because he was very, you know, into like, um, I think he was very technical, you know, he could, he would manage, you know, do igloo, like, I don't think I could ever do build that. Um, so it was, it was quite interesting and, and it was always, yeah, I remember always um, white winter um, and, and Christmas, but I don't, I think last couple of years, because of the, the climate change, um, I think that there's not that, winter is not, um, it's not as white and Christmas is not as white as it used to was. Mm -hmm. We had huskies, so they, they had much fun over the winter. <laughs> yeah, and like you said, um, uh, it, it's not as much snow at the minute, or it, it's more difficult to plan winter holidays at home now because you know maybe years ago it's like okay December January February hundred percent guaranteed snow, so let's go skiing, let's go this. Uh, families were booking Christmas in mountains and stuff like that. Now you don't have them. It's not hundred percent sure you will have. Uh, white Christmas or white winter guaranteed in every month. My dreams and aspirations. Um, I don't have any yet, but I think I'm just going to sort of stay in school, maybe take as many GCSEs or A levels as I possibly can, and then sort of figure out what I want to do in the future, and then just sort of make it happen. <laughs> Um, my dreams and aspirations for the future. I think, you know, when you're a kid, you sort of think, you know, oh, I want to finish school and um, maybe I want to do, I don't know, I'll be a policeman or, or I don't know, um, fire brigade, you know, person or do lots of different things, you know, a sort of like a hero wise. Um, when you grow up, you, I think it's, it's the perspective changes. Um, so I think, you know, what my dreams are is really, you know, that. Um, the family will stay healthy and that we all can, you know, go back to our sports and we can enjoy life, you know, with no scare that, oh, if I go and see my family and friends, will I make them sick or will they make me sick or can I hug actually my friend or can I not hug my friend? Um, so I think my dream is really, you know, that, you know, everything will go back to where we were before um, the virus hit um, and the whole pandemic and I think, you know, that, that would be a very big step um, and, and probably just, you know, meet my friends again and hang in them. And, <laughs> um, 
the biggest dream I have outside of all this it's to travel to the moon and back but that might be you know <laughs> that still is going to be a dream I think until I die <laughs> wow dreams and aspirations um, I guess like whatever Sylvia you mentioned it's like the older you get uh, you worry about mm, no maybe the older you get uh, the more aware you are of what's happening and in the same time you dream about simpler stuff you know because when you're younger you have this like yeah. wow crazy crazy ideas crazy dreams maybe not they're not that crazy but the older you get it's like right I just want to be healthy I just want to be happy I just want to love and be loved you know, simple Good things, sleep. and I think, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sleep eight hours, which is like, whoa, when did that happen? Uh, but I think this is one positive thing from this pandemic situation that people started living simpler lives and they started appreciating uh, people around them, what they have in life, how important health is, how important family is, how important social life and friends are, uh, which is really good which is really good because uh, uh, in times prior pandemic it's like people can people would rush uh, run uh, have you know crazy list of different tasks to do before they go to bed it's like run 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 rush 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 just not sitting down having time to important things in life yeah. Uh, so relax and I yeah, guess and th enjoy. this is this is yeah. uh, this is a really good positive thing that came out of it. But um, in terms of uh, dreams, uh, I would just mention about my voluntary work here uh, because we met through volleyball and we're uh, connected uh, socially through volleyball here with with girls. Um, uh, dream is to develop the club. To, to spread our beloved sport because volleyball is not very popular in Ireland at all. This is like a minority sport and uh, even until now people at work are like, so how was netball match last night? It's like, it's not netball, no, you know, with all respect, netball is a good sport and all these things, but it's not netball. So what is volleyball? Tell me again. So I was like, right, so now I know how to explain it. It's like, do you know what beach volleyball is? Because you know, people know that beach volleyball, you know, two girls in bikini on the beach playing ball. Like, yeah, that's volleyball. So this is volleyball, this is this, but indoor with six people dressed, playing over the net. So this is what I play. So it would be good to spread it, to, to make it more popular. And actually, um, I, w I also work for a governing body voluntary. So it would be good to get uh, at least one person that earns money and spreads the word because we all work. Uh, in our free time, after work, after all our duties and other responsibilities we have and it would be good to kind of get someone that would could dedicate their full time uh, and, and grow the sport. Vesowy Shield! <laughs>